Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably the reason why so few engage in it. Henry Ford. Too often we enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. John F. Kennedy. The most fundamental attack on freedom is the attack on critical thinking skills. Travis Nicholas. The masses lack of critical thinking. The masses lack of challenging what they're told is going to be the downfall of our society. Before 2020, I don't think I've ever put out a public anything regarding politics or anything. It doesn't really interest me. I feel like it's a waste of time and it's just a bunch of smoke and mirrors for the most part. And I know that was a myopic worldview. I know that we do need to fight for our freedoms and there are certain things that we need to do to try to make the world a better place. But usually the way we try to go about this and we try to say that government should do this or do that just makes it worse. Government cannot make things better. It can make things worse. Like by default, there's no real checks and balances. The government can't fail. People can't opt out of the system. They can't not be debt and tax slaves. I mean, you kind of can, but most people won't. And as we've already seen, the public is ever willing to give up rights and freedoms in exchange for some perceived safety, whether it's the war on drugs, the war on terror, the war on now viruses in nature. The public is ever willing because they think, save this person, save that, do whatever. Ask them to give up their phone. Ask them to give up certain creature comforts. They won't care but ask them to put on a mask because they're convinced that it's going to save them or save other people. And then they can also shame other people. They can feel morally superior. Well, that's running rampant. Say, hey, you don't have to work. Here's a check. Go sit at home. Most people that don't like their jobs, which is a lot of Americans, will gladly take that. And they'll gladly prop up the perpetuation of the reason in the first place because they're getting paid to. Hospitals get paid to write down a five-letter word on a piece of paper. Anybody that speaks out is being investigated by the medical board, as is, I believe his name is Scott Jensen. You should look into that. You should support him because what they're doing to him is preposterous. One second, you can't go outside. The next second, as long as you're protesting for a certain group of people, it's okay. Then back to not going outside, wearing masks, mandating, $2,000 fine in Austin if you don't wear a mask. Unbelievable the world we're living in. Orwell would be turning in his grave. You want to know what happened right after Hitler was appointed chancellor of Germany? There was a Dutch, I guess, radical. I don't remember what what he was affiliated with, but he set a fire inside of a public building. Hitler then used that to convince the uh, von, whatever his name was. I um, I guess he was president. I don't know what they call the main guy over in Germany, but he was the main guy. Hitler convinced him to call a state of a national emergency and then suppress freedom of assembly, speech, other rights that were before afforded to the citizens were immediately gone because it was what? In the name of safety. And then soon after, when the main dude died, Hitler rose to power. And then the Gestapo, and then this, and then that. And then before you knew it, the average German citizen that was probably like, oh, well, there's not really much I can do. I kind of have to just like hang out there, whether they agreed or not. And then before you knew it, they were in a police state. And if you were to speak up or publish or do anything that was counter to the state or the party, you'd be killed. This type of stuff has happened throughout history. We think it can't happen to us in America because, you know, America, we're the best, whatever. That's why I'm really nervous for our future generation. These kids are growing up. They don't know anything about history. Even my current generation, my age and even older, a lot of them don't know anything about history. The public's unwillingness to challenge the narrative. They don't even question it. They just go along. It's going to be the crumbling of our society. I don't want it to happen. I'm not one to want to spread fear and panic. So like for me, it's a practical approach. We can see all the signs. We can see the polarization of politics. We can see the banning of statues, the burning of books, banning Gone with the Wind, things like that. We can see all the nonsense. And maybe 2020 is just these things finally coming to roost. Maybe 2020 is finally when the dollar collapses and the house of cards goes under. Maybe we have hyperinflation. Maybe a pound of beef becomes $50 because of hyperinflation. Maybe we have a major food disruption. Maybe there's a civil war. Maybe there's a revolution. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody can predict. I'm still on the side that I think will probably be mostly okay, but we still have a lot of crazy things ahead. And so that's why I'm preparing in response. So to give you just some practical things you can do, I've been talking about a lot lately. One thing, buy gold and Bitcoin. This is not investing advice, but this is what I'm doing. Gold, silver, Bitcoin. I sold off some of my riskier equity positions and I converted that into gold, Bitcoin, and silver. Two, make sure you have your passport. Renew it if you need to or get it now as the thing you do right after you listen to or watch this. Literally go fill out the form, 
I think you can even do it online at this point or go to your local post office and set an appointment and get it done. If things get really haywire, you want to be able to go somewhere else. There's always going to be somewhere else you can go. Even if it's only temporary, have that plan B option. And really, if those were the only two things you did, you'd be more prepared than 99.99% of Americans. You'd have a passport and you'd have some real money that you can use if the dollar collapses or if you're in another jurisdiction or whatever. Real money, gold, silver, Bitcoin, passport. Then some other things you can do are stop paying the debt or stop, stop living above your means. Stop going into debt. Hustle, sell things, find ways to make some money. Do everything you can to stock up right now. Do your own research, challenge the narrative. Look at what they're saying and what your neighbors are saying and people are doing. Go on YouTube as much as I'm becoming upset with YouTube, but they're censoring. And you can find a lot of independent sources. There's also like uh, BitChute and Libsyn. I think it's Libsyn, I don't know. There's some other platforms that are like freedom of speech platforms. Get off Twitter, Twitter's toxic garbage. Try Parler maybe. Share good ideas, share things that are counter to what everybody's perpetuating at this point. At the very least, you'll be a defense against the ever encroaching tide of absurdity. And really, if you want something to be concerned about, be concerned about the next virus. They've already been trying to set it up in the news. Bill Gates is already talking about it. They're talking about a bunny Ebola, another swine flu, this and that. They're trying to set it up because what's going to happen next time? If this happens again, it's almost statistically likely to happen again because there are 50 to 100 of these new that come out every year. 50 to 100, most of which we never identify. Most mutate, they do this, they do that. A lot of them die off. And invariably, I would say a good percentage of them, maybe all of them, I don't know the actual numbers, they eventually get into humans one way or the other and they get passed around. The next one that gets any media attention, I think is gonna be 1984, martial law, restriction, nobody can travel, all passports canceled or restricted. It's going to be insane. And that's what I'm most concerned about. I'm not concerned about 2020. I'm concerned about maybe 2021 or 2022. Let it die down a little bit. Maybe start sowing some seeds, talking about it here and there. And then bam, out of nowhere, executive order, shut down the country, restrict all food access, freeze all assets. Nobody can come or go. And now you get your allotted assortment of food and this and that every month. And then it's the USSSS of America, I guess. It's communism, it's socialism. It's what a lot of the young generation has been manipulated into thinking is better or that they could do better. And it will be the end of our civilization as we know it and our way of life. And everybody, even those that are vying for this are going <laughs> to regret it. It's gonna be bad. I won't be here for it, nor will my family. But I feel very saddened that many people will be stuck. They will be stuck because they don't prepare or some other unforeseen circumstances. That's what I'm concerned about. And that's why I've shifted a lot of my content, which was health and mindset stuff, over to preparing and thinking for yourself and challenging the status quo. Just doing what I can.